the certificate recording in progress. Now, if things come up and something happens where, for instance, you might have to go away somewhere, someone in your family passes away, then please speak to us and we can, you know, make arrangements and help, okay? Now, what is hoped that we have a room full of devotees here on, on the first day, what's the test? Is how many of you are still sitting here on the last day? <laughs> so let's hope you all stay with us, Hare Krishna. So please try your best. Um, so for those online, I'm sure you're familiar with this online. If you are online, please make sure you're muted. Okay. Unless you're speaking, then you unmute, obviously. Um, yeah, for those online, it's very nice if you can have your cameras on. It's very nice. Um, it helps me. Otherwise, I feel like I'm speaking to a computer. As well, I've got devotees in front of me. So it's not absolutely required, but if you can have your cameras on, it's good. Unless you're in a very difficult, unless you're skiing or something. <laughs> And doing some activity, unless you've got your curlers in. No, please try and have online. Then I can see you. I can see your expressions on your faces, etc. Hare Krishna. Of course, Sachi Kumar Nima is both. He is here and he's online. <laughs> no, no. Okay. So, yeah, respect uh, other people and their opinions. So, we will have some discussions. Okay. So, we ask for your different opinions on different topics. So some of them, so you might have different opinions than others, okay? So please keep in mind, give time and give respect to everyone who may have different opinions on different aspects of our culture and philosophy. You understand? Because we'll be, as we go on, we'll be breaking into groups and you'll be having discussions about topics yeah so just keep that in mind please maintain this Vaishnav etiquette of great respect for devotees even if their opinions are different okay it does happen sometimes <laughs> all right um keep your contact details up to date that's the patri mataji um check your emails at least once a week we'll be sending you things yeah information etc so it's good to keep a track on that yeah, please switch off mobile phones if you please. Incline, yeah, be willing and enthusiastic. Hare Krishna. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Okay. Okay, so myself, I um, might be with you for the first six chapters of Bhagavad Gita. Okay, then we have devotee Bamsi Dadi Prabhu. He gave class this morning. Who was here for class this morning? Nobody? Okay, so... He's a senior member of our congregation, so he'd be next up. Could get. Must be updated now. Okay. So the next teacher would be Amala Manjari. Okay. Next teacher for seven chapter seven to twelve will be Amala Manjari. Who knows Amala Manjari? A few. So you'll get to meet her. And the third part, Bhagavad Gita, comes in three sections from three to eighteen. That's. Then it becomes Dari. Then Vamsi Dadi comes in there. Then, so Mother Yumaneshwari. Yeah, she's not available. Okay, she's not available. And okay. She, 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 all right, so change a bit. So, uh, beloved Temple President, we'll take you through Isha Upanishad. And then Vamsi Vat will be doing nectar of instruction. Okay. Yeah. Vamsi Vat is a head pajari. Hands up if you know Vamsi Vat. Yeah. You've got to, if you don't, you will get to know all these devotees by the end of the year. And then, then Doya Mora, would you? Yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah, then me again, I'm afraid. So it's, that's an act of devotion. Okay. I'll, that'll be in 2025. That'll be next year. Hopefully, I see you. You have to promise me that you're going to see me for an of devotion next year. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Hare Krishna. All right. So let's have a bit of an icebreaker. Anyone's heard of icebreaker before? So we'll keep it a bit simple. Yeah, such a good one. It's nice uh, to be, we'll be able to see them online. Uh, well, this, uh, I mean, handbooks out on your portfolio. Yeah. 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 
So, um, so for unit one, there's two uh, pinkertons that we need. So there's one that under um, student handbook, and then there's another one called additional pinkertons. So for unit one, you could use both of those pinkertons. Oh, I was meaning, like, as we're going through this now, can people online see that as well? Yeah, if they have access to their. Should be, you should see it on uh, the um, Zoom. On the Zoom, that's what I was thinking. I haven't seen it. I'm just wondering if others can see it. Yeah, Zoom can see. Oh, at the moment we can't actually say. Oh, Zoom, you should say something on Zoom. Okay, thank you, Sachi Kamani Michael. So, you can share me, help me share the screen. I have to come out, huh? Let's do. You have to go to the slides of yeah. Come out of the escape. And then you go to Zoom. Zoom. Here, yes, this edition. Well, you could put it into this stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can see, yeah. Okay, so then I go back here. Hare Krishna. Okay, so let's just um, hear your names. Now, I shall try to remember your names by the end of the year. No, before that, <laughs> I will try my best. Some of you I know, some of you I don't. So let's just start from here. And we're just, but we won't follow this. We won't ask you to introduce your neighbor. Okay, we'll ask you to just introduce yourself and a few words of why you're here, what's inspired to bring you here. But, Try and keep it a bit short if you can. Okay. So we have a cameraman here. Have a good snack. Tell us if uh, she had this film. Oh, so here we have another furry monster. And some Mark the Tom. Hi, Krishna. Yeah. Hi, Krishna. Hi, Krishna, everyone. My name is Zanda, and um, I'm staying in the CVA, which is the contemporary Vedic ashram near the temple. Um, so I've started doing service here in the last couple of months. And um yeah kind of studying and reading the books so i can eventually maybe start to share with other people as well from a place of knowledge um is something i want to do eventually so this course hopefully can help with that yeah Hare krishna thank you thank you alexander Hare krishna. Hare krishna um my name is lucas i'm currently about eight months into back to second year physics student at UCL and I really like the books <laughs> so I thought I'd want to go deeper on the books essentially hopefully more realizations from such wonderful teachers as well I had also recommended by a senior devotee to come and do Bhakti Shastri yeah. so Harry Bo Harry can, thank you for everyone can hear at the back there okay no. Perhaps if you can, if it's okay, unless you don't, we can turn around so everyone can see who, who, who you are. Hare Krishna. Hare Paul, everybody. Uh, my name is Neela. And um, uh, the reason why I joined this course is uh, I've been studying Prabhupada's books, but recently I retired and I, uh, I felt that I want to do something for my eternal well-being. So that's the reason why I've joined this course. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. You just joined today. <laughs> yes, I just joined today. Um, it's, I've been coming here for... Tell us your name. Uh, uh, Rob. My name's Rob. Rob? Yeah. yeah okay, Rob. Rob. Very good. Um, yeah, it's, I've been coming here for... It must be as much as two years now or something like that. Um, I, I've been reading books and things, but it's... It's, I should, it's about time I've come to a course now. I think it should have happened right. much sooner. But, so, right. uh, so it's... Um, I've, Okay, hopefully, uh, uh, start, start uh, studying on this course. I think it's uh, send every class as we, we, uh, be very interesting. Nice, nice. So, we're reading the books a couple of years, yes, yes. want to come to yes. go a bit deeper, yeah. Wonderful, yes. thank, you. thank you for having me with that. us. Yeah, thank, you. So, thank you, Hare Krishna. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. A little bit, Hare Krishna. Um, my name is Sohil. Um, Say your name again. Sohil. Sohil. Sohil, yes. Sohil. Okay. Yeah. Um, why I'm doing Bhakti Shastri is to 
improve my shraddha, so faith. So I want to dive deeper into my faith and make it even stronger than it's previously. And um, I've been participating in a uh, sangha. So it's a small group of people doing um, on Bhagavad Gita. So and um, uh, one of the teachers there, they were telling me to go through the course and it would just help me understand the Gita better as well. So yeah. Thank you for joining us. Hare Krishna. So, Hare Krishna. Oh, yeah. Hi Krishna. Um, my name is Levine. Um, I've read, you know, the odd passage here and there within this Gita, but never actually studied it. So that's okay. kind of uh, the main reason. Because I just, I would just open it and then kind of read a passage, and then never, then you know, then like a, a month later, I'll read another passage. It never really kind of went through it properly. So that this is kind of a way to kind of force me to do that. Uh, yeah, it's so, definitely you're uh, ending the right course. Yeah, yeah. Sure. so I'm looking to kind of deep dive into this. Uh, so okay. yeah, that's why I'm here. Welcome. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. My name's Lisa. Um, I find that I am better um, reading when I'm reading with other people. Mm. And also something like this is, makes me a little bit more accountable. So I will actually read regularly. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, obviously I'm hoping to understand more in the books. Great, great. Yeah, it's good. It helps to be more accountable. Yeah. Hare Krishna. I'm Anvesha. So I decided to do this Bhakti Shatsri course because I wanted to read the books quite well, dive deep into it and understand it quite well with senior devotees. So, yeah, that's the reason. Right. Everyone wants to dive deeper. Very nice. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. My name is Anishwara Das. Um, I just want to yeah, dive deeper and then study in more structured ways rather than just reading it myself only. Thank you. Okay. In structured study. Hi, Krishna. My name is Russell. Um, I've been reading Prabhupada's books and associating with devotees since about 1988. Wow. But I spent most of my life as a drug and alcohol user. So I'm now almost 10 years great uh, clean of my well drink done. drugs. And uh, the thing is, um, when I got my sobriety and I employed Krishna as my higher power, then everything became like deeply meaningful. But I can have a tendency sometimes to philosophize and my own imagination gets in the way of my understanding. Oh, okay. So it's good to have some formal instruction and have my uh, misunderstandings and my imaginative philosophy smashed. <laughs> Great. Wonderful to have you here. Hello, everyone. My name is Vabhav. Um, I've been reading Prabhupada's book for last uh, year now. Uh, but whenever it comes to Bhagavad Gita, after second chapter, I'm never able to like go further that because many times I'm not able to understand some slokas from third chapter. So I always have to stop and then, you know, try to... Because I... I'm not able to continue uh, if I'm not able to understand a particular thing once. So yeah. when I got to know about this, I was like, this is a really good opportunity to, you know, understand Shloka from senior devotees and from, you know, and to discuss them basically. So that's why, like, I got yeah, it. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. How long have you been reading the books, you said? I missed that. Sorry? How long have you been reading? For a year now. A year now. Okay. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Special guest. Just well, not, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> uh, I'm Bobby, and I'd say I'm here because I'm pretty useless on my own. My discipline is awful. So I think to come here every Sunday for a year will uh, serve as a good anchor. And um, the association and hearing from people like yourself and Dalmore will be really good. Great. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Well done for joining us. Hi, my name is Sebastian. Hi, Krishna. Um, I've been here for um a bit four louder. years. I've been here for four years, and I really like the books. But um, I wanted to study them deeper and um, learn some shlokas and uh, good association. And that's it. Good. one of our brahmacharis here. Lives upstairs. Hare Krishna. Well done. Yeah, you can see. We don't need to turn around. You can see those. Hare Krishna. Yeah. My, my name is uh, Sachi Kumar Nimai. Das. <laughs> and um, I was just thinking, it's a great question. Why, why am I here? And uh, 
you might be familiar with this story they tell about uh, the builders chipping away at the stones, and they ask, "Why are you doing this?" And one says, oh, "I'm, I'm, what are you doing?" He says, and then he says, "I'm chipping away at stone." And then they ask another one, "What are you doing?" He says, "I'm building a cathedral." So it's like context. So for me, what I'm doing is um, participating in the establishment of uh, uh, Bhaktivedanta degrees, um, so that they can be. Um, recognized at the universities so that's one aspect my guru maharaj also asked for his disciples to pass the back to shastra so that's a, a very Jai key Pataka, maharaj. very key uh jay pataka swami yeah that's a key motivation for me being here and i think the third one is that a couple of years ago i started a, a what i call the transcendental personal development business um called kalpa uh, and so i've done some personal development qualifications and now this is the bhakti shastri qualification to complement that so those wow. are a few reasons why i'm here qualified Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. all right now we're gonna go online that's uh we've got those online what we want what we're trying to achieve here is that we all get to know each other you will do and then also get to know those online as well so those online hopefully the experience we're going to give you is an immersive experience so you feel part of the classroom so it'd be wonderful if we could just hear your saying just tell us your name and uh, why you're here studying back to Sastri. hopefully you'll come through clearly so i'll just spotlight you one at a time and you can unmute yourselves hopefully as well. we can hear you okay so we Second. All right. Hello. Uh, Hare Krishna. My name is Asta, and I just wanted to. I have few reasons. I have, um, I wanted to learn more about Bhagavad Gita, and um, from last couple of years, my son has been asking so many things to me, which I'm like, I answer. I try to answer those things, but it's like it will be better for me if I learn it. Uh, better and then I explain it to him so that is the main reason for me Hare Krishna Hare wonderful Krishna. thank you for joining us Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. and next yes. Hare Krishna yes Hare Krishna I recognize you Hare Krishna um my name is Brandon. I'm Sicily. <laughs> um, I uh, have been reading uh, Shri Prabhupada's books for some years, uh, but I think in my arrogance before, I didn't really think that I needed to um, study study them in the presence of others until we did our Guru Disciple course with Dora Mora, which um, was really um, a deepening and wonderful experience. And, got the sort of taste that were desperate for the association of the Vaishnavas uh, in reading Prabhupada's books. So, so grateful for this opportunity. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much for doing that online as well. It's a wonderful service. Thank you so much. No problem. Very good. Show. Yeah, and I can add as well that um, the idea of studying really appeals as well, learning the shlokas and writing essays and things. And because we read personally together, but it can be sporadic. So mm -hmm. I think, um, like many people have said, there's that um, commitment really helps and taking it really seriously and having others to encourage you is important. So. Yeah, great. Definitely helps. It definitely helps me to study Bhagavad Gita every Sunday as well. <laughs> Good for me as well, discipline myself. Thank you for joining us. Where are you joining us from? Which country again? It's France, Italy? We're, we're living in Watford at the oh, moment. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so we, we, might, we might be able to come in person uh, in, in some oh, days, but, but not, uh, not that much. <laughs> yeah, we do have a couple of students. There's one trying to get in from Mayapur, actually, West Bengal in India, and Mayapur. There's another couple of students from France. They might be us here. So some of you might be doing that. Some of you, you might be going online sometimes might feel a bit sick you know you, you're you're welcome to do that as long as we don't lose everyone here and you'll go online <laughs> but that you have those online may come in and some of you might not be able to get here then you can always have that facility to do online okay Hare Krishna wonderful to have you with us all the way from Watford Junction okay <laughs>
Go on. Next. Um, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, my name is Prakash Taylor. Um, I've been studying Srila Prabhupada's uh, books for some time. Uh, I read the Bhagavad Gita twice, but I didn't actually get an uh, in-depth knowledge. Um, I didn't learn the slokes. So maybe this time round, uh, having the association of all your Vaishnavas here, I, I, I probably might get a little bit further on, possibly. Uh, I did the Guru Disciple course with Brendan as well. So uh, it, it's nice to meet you again. Um, yes. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I'm not feeling that well today, so I couldn't attend the temple. Uh, but next week, 100%, I'll be there. Hare Krishna. Right. See you in person. Hare Krishna. And anybody? Yeah, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you for organizing this course online and offline as well. Um, I'm Bhava Sindhu Gaur Das. Uh, my name is Pratik as well, the previous name. Uh, the reason I joined this course is to study Bhagavad Gita and other uh, Prabhupada books uh, systematically in depth. And I find myself learning more when I'm with uh, some seniors are teaching and um, there is a group of devotees. I find it's the best uh, way I, I learn through that. Uh, I've been learning a Prabhupada books since the last two years with, uh, with a small group of devotees in Croydon uh, every morning. Uh, so my seniors there, my mentors, they suggested me to, you know, study it more deeper systematically with, with this group. Uh, Great. So, and I'm very inspired to join because this is the best thing. I, I will get association every Sunday and some days I can also come there and, and attend in the temple. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's the reason to understand it more systematically. Um, yeah, and in a way to also... Uh, please, my Guru Maharaj, because he also asked us to study it more systematically and deeper. Uh, there's so much nectar which comes out through discussions with the, with the devotees and, and seniors guiding especially. So, yeah, that's why I joined the course. Okay, thank you for joining us, Sadi Krishna. I think we have a couple more. Hare Krishna, Baba. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. My name is Smita, and so I've been reading for passports for the last two years. So I was thinking like maybe I would just have a deep study of one of the scriptures at least for like just just to see how it's like me. If I can, I'm not sure if I can be able to grasp it, but still. So okay. I'm just registered for the East Shobanishad for now. And then I will see if I can make up like attend the sessions regularly and things because of childcare only I'm able to attend online. Otherwise I'll be like, no problem attending face to face. Some days I'll be able to come to the temple. Um, every it's evening I, I'm able to make it to the temple for the um, evening program, but not maybe not regularly to the temple. So that's why I plan to attend regular like online. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for being with us, Sadi Krishna. I think we have uh, one or two. No, it's quite a few online. How many do we have online? Eleven. 11. We have 11 devotees online. Hare Krishna. Yes, please, Ruru, please. Uh, Hare Krishna, of course, Shri Prabhupada. Um, uh, my name is Abhijit. Uh, I've um, uh, been taking the Bhagavad Gita class here in Edinburgh for the last eight, about eight months. And I'm writing a book on the Bhagavad Gita, so I thought I'd uh, try and get some more input onto um, getting, getting that book correct and getting the Getting, helping here people here to understand the Bhagavad Gita. So that's my principal aim. Okay. Thank you for uh, interesting. Hare allowing Krishna. me to join. Yeah. Oh, thank you for being with us. Very interesting. Hare Krishna. Yes. Hare Krishna. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Hare Krishna. Brilliant. Hare Krishna, everyone. My name is Kush. Uh, the reason why I have joined Bhakti Shastri is because I'm part of a community in Krodi and uh, we have a Sangha. So our mentors, Radha Raman Prabhu, Sham Govinda Prabhu, has recommended that myself and Sohul, who's currently sitting in the room, should do Bhakti Shastri to increase our Shraddha faith, uh, mm -hmm. deeper in our spiritual practice, 
so that we can share with others in Crawley and hopefully have our own Sangha one day. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. Thank you for organizing this. And hopefully I could be there in person sometime. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. If anyone needs water, we have water there. Don't forget Hare Krishna. Hope we uh, might not get to the first chapter today. <laughs> Let's see. Hare Krishna. Uh, can you guys hear me? Hare Krishna. Yes, we can. Hare Krishna. Uh, yeah, uh, so my name is Navan. Um, I'm actually based in London. Uh, I'm doing my master's degree, but I'm currently calling in from Singapore. Uh, I've come back home to visit the family. Uh, so thank you for whoever's organized the online version of this. Uh, it was quite funny. I actually only found out about this course about 10 minutes before it was supposed to start. And I quickly really? registered myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, the reason I'm here today is um, is to strengthen my knowledge. I feel I've read stuff before and I've and I've read Prabhupada's books, but I've never really got to internalize them and actually take notes and do exams and give it a formal structure towards them. So I'm looking forward to having that opportunity over here to get that formal structure and really understand the true message and you know everything behind it. Okay, thank you. Horrible. Valuable information to me. Yes. More? I think that's the real one. Did we miss anyone online? No, we got you all. Hare Krishna. Yes. I'm also online, but I'm <laughs> <laughs> you just have Are you just are you part of the course, sir? Yeah. Okay. Please um you can introduce yourself, your name, and uh, quickly why you're here as quick as possible. <laughs> Thank you, Krishna, everyone. My name is Krishna Kanda, and um, I joined this course because um, I had this deep desire to study the scriptures in a more formal and structured manner. And um, I've all, always struggled to learn the verses, and someone okay. told me if you join the Bhakti Shatam, you'll be forced to learn the verses. And then, uh -huh. and, okay, uh -huh. I, I think. <laughs> That's another reason I want to look it up. Yeah. Okay, great. Yes, we shall force you to learn the slogans. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> okay, thank you, everyone. All right, let's go back where we were. They can see this online. <laughs> online, can you see the screen where it says icebreaker? Just yeah. raise your hands. No, not yet. Can't see. So we have a Jai Krishna Prabhu, he's a technical man. Stop sharing. No? Stop sharing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. But that was the wrong one. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's just... no, not. You, you have done some last one? Yeah. This is right. Okay. So online you can see now. Jai, yes, from top uh, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Okay, let's move on. Um, one more. Uh, one more has just joined us. Hare Krishna. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. If you just tell us your name and quickly, what's inspired you to take part in Bhakti Sashri? Uh, my name is Ananta Kirti Vividasi. <laughs> I'm doing service here in the temple. So I want to speak up a bit. Oh, I, yeah. I'm doing some service here in the temple okay. for the deities. So I want to improve. My knowledge. <laughs> right. I want to prove it. It's a good place to come. Hare Krishna. Okay, so what's the tons of students then we have now? 30 or so. Anyway, quite a few. That's about 28. 28. In the very beginning, when we first um, decided to revive back to Sashtri and we put it out there for everyone. We had two people registered. We were scratching our head. Shall we go forward with it or not? So then at some point in time, we decided we decided to try hybrid and put it online as well. 
and then we extended the, the uh, start time. So anyway, now we have all of you have come. So that's wonderful. Hare Krishna. So these are the books we're going to be studying. You all have your Back to Sashtri handbook, the student handbook. Yeah, you connect up with Dipatri, yeah, and she make sure you get that. Everyone's got that. Everyone's tuned into the student handbook. We didn't print it out, um, but if you want to print it, you're quite welcome to print it. Some of you might find it easier to work with the book like that. It's up to you, okay? But you all have access to that. That's your student handbook. Um, so there'll be, you'll get a separate handbook for Nectar of Instruction, Isha Upanishad. You have your one for Bhagavad Gita. Do you just have chapters one to six, or you have the whole Bhagavad Gita in your handbook? Oh, actually, the slides which you have presently in your handbook, it's going to change, all right? That there's, there's a different set of slides, so we will make sure you get that. Everyone's clear on that? Yeah? They can use it as a resource. Um, as you know, this is what we're studying, Bhagavad Gita, Nectar of Instruction, Isha Upanishad, Nectar of Devotion, chapters 1 to 19, Nectar of Devotion, okay? Now we describe about open book assessment and closed book assessment a few slides down, okay? And about the verses, to memorize the verses. If you have any questions, Raise your hand, you know, just let us know, okay? Also online, if you can let Jai Krishna know if you have any questions, I might see your hand as well. Um, online, you have the opportunity, of probably most of you know, you can put up your hand, yeah, your golden hand, and we, if you have any questions, something's not clear. So we're doing orientation now. So let's just have, let's just read a few quotes from Prabhupada about Paksa Sastri. Anyone? Here, would like to read this one here. Our first business is to preach the devotees and to maintain the highest standard of Vaishnava education. Okay. Prabhupada wrote his books so we could read them and we can educate ourselves in what is the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. So someone else could read here. I wish to introduce this examination system so that in the future, our students may not remain unconcerned with these books we are publishing. These books are not material knowledge. Yeah, this is Prabhupada's mandate. This was Srila Prabhupada's inspiration to hold examinations on his books. So that's why we have it here today. Okay. Just have a couple more. Someone else? Shastri is actually a recognition. A person knows the principles of devotional service. Yeah, okay, so hopefully you're going to get a certificate at the end of this course. Let's have someone online can read this one. That, that came from online? <laughs> huh? <No? laughs> All right, don't worry. Online, you have to get the next opportunity. Sorry about that. So I'm trying to figure out where the voice is coming from. Okay, so um, beyond Bhakti Sastri, um, there is other exams and courses as well. Bhakti Vaya Baba, Bhakti Vedanta, Bhakti Shava Bom. You can see them there. Um, we have a pencil plan to do Bhakti Vaya Baba as well. That will probably, hopefully, that will start next year. Yeah. I've done Bhakti Vai Bhava part one, and I'm going away to Mayapur to do Bhakti Vai Bhava part two. We have another couple of devotees here who study Bhakti Vai Bhava, so we might offer that to you as well and others, okay? Bhakti Vedanta, Bhakti Shava Bhava, let's hope, let's see. Yeah? All right, so it is Bhakti Vai Bhava. After this, you can do Bhakti Vedanta, Bhakti Shava Bhava, okay? All right. That's uh, as a tourist person who takes tourists around, who stops outside the temple and tells them about the Hare Krishnas every Sunday. He's been doing it for years, 25 years, he's been every Sunday. <laughs> okay. 
All right, now we're going to get into a few details so you're all very clear. I was hoping that the deep battery mother will be here, but she's looking after her son. So let's. Um, so this is the structure of the course. Um, this is the first section. I'm taking you through chapters one to six. Bhagavad Gita is traditionally um, split into three sections, yeah, three parts. And this is the study we'll be doing, chapters one to six, seven to 12, and 13 to 18. We'll discuss a bit more about that. Unit four, Isha Upanishad, Nectar Instruction, Nectar Devotion. Now, we don't have the dates here, but I think you have the dates. You should have the dates there when we'll be covering these different books, okay? So you should be clear on that. I think we're together for about 10 classes, okay? So it's up to me to make sure to manage things that we get through chapters one to six in perhaps nine classes, 10, 10 classes, okay? So I shall manage that. I shall try and cover that, okay? That's the basic course structure. Now you probably, there's different types of assessment. There's uh let me just see if it's here. Yeah. Okay, okay. Open book assessment. Everyone's clear what open book assessment is. It means you can look at books, okay? That means you get you get a choice of questions that um you can answer, okay, or that you can answer, you get a choice out of about five. Then you may choose one or two. You got that, yeah, open book assessment. Then you can Study it and write it in your own time. All right? Referring to the Bhagavad Gita, quoting from Bhagavad Gita, other places like that. All right? And I forget, from other words, she said, there's a certain amount of words. How many words do we know it should be minimum? We can let you know about that, but it's not a long essay. Honestly, it's about one A4 page. Yeah? And you'll get plenty of time to do that. You can always come to us for advice and ask questions like that, okay? A few worried faces now when speaking about <laughs> assessments. But, it's, but we can take you through it. Um, we can help you. Then closed book assessment. Um, I want to come out of here and show you something now. Um, so I'm going to stop share. Stop share. And then and come here so can they I have to share again isn't it I have to share this so everyone here can see this can they see it online sorry yeah. okay online can you see self-study questions okay yes thank you yes. so so in your student handbook, you have you have these for each chapters. Yeah. Now the closed book assessment, we will take three or four, five or six questions from this list of 16. Yeah. And then you will answer them. And that's so we're gonna arrange it online. So you know how we're gonna do this online, you, you will hear about that. Mother, Deepa Dutri will, will, will take you through that. But then you won't have any books anywhere. You're just closed book, okay? That's what that means. Now, I give you some advice how to make it very easy for yourself. Um, this is how I do it for Bhakti Vai Baba and Bhakti Sastri. I found it much helpful. What I suggest you do is um, you go through these questions and you find the answers and you write the answer underneath. Now, the answers are very clear, okay? It's, it refers to specific sentences in Prabhupada's purports. So, for instance, when we begin chapter one, I'll take you through number two and number three, okay? So, what is the significance of Dhritarashtra saying Mamaka? We will cover that, hopefully today, all right? So, then you have the answer. So then once you have, once you've done that and you have the answers to each question, just read it once a week. Yeah, just read it once or twice a week. Just read through it. 
And then when it comes to the closed book assessment, you'll easily remember. You, you understand me? That's how it, that's how I do it personally. I'm doing it now for Bhakti Vai Baba too. I'm going through finding the questions, finding the answers, and putting it underneath. And I read it every week. And the day before the closed book assessment, I read it four or five times. Yeah. That's um, that way you should be able to easily be able to answer the questions. Okay. Is that clear, everyone online? Thumbs up. Yeah, great. Hare Krishna. It's all there on your cell site. So now I've got a new share. Um, here again. Um, here. Yeah. Do you want to share with your notes? Bring back your no. Yeah, yeah, if it's possible. Okay. So, Any questions? Please feel free to ask. Anything's not clear. The self study questions are found also on like, yeah. the Yeah. The self study questions are found in a student's handbook. Yeah. If not, we can. My slideshow here. Um, yeah. Then I don't, so I can go without um, notes. Okay. Yeah, this one. But when it comes to the students' aims, a bit. Okay, so you're clear. Open book assessment. You're clear about that. And it come, for instance, it will come after each section. So chapters one to six. Then we have a one open book assessment and one closed book assessment for chapters one to six, like that. Okay, all right. And please come to us if you're not clear on the questions or the answers, things like that, and we can help you, yeah? All right? So reciting verses is once that you join just to recite verses. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. So we have a different system than normal. I think Mother mentioned that in the beginning. Then in your own space, in your own time, you can record yourself reciting the verses. Now, next week, um, next Sunday, I'm going to take you through my personal method of learning slokas, okay, to help you. And also I've done some little videos which might help you in learning slokas. So we we'll go through that next week. Now, some students, she's not here today. Um, what's her name? Um, Mataji Ashram. Bob Harini. She... Um, has, has already sent in some recordings of her doing a sloka. So you understand? You close your eyes and you recite the sloka, Sanskrit and English, and you record yourself. Is that clear? And then you send it into that platform. Now, if you can, can you, uh, we can ask for, rather than recite one verse, we, we will ask you to recite, how many should we have? Two or four? Three, we're gonna we we want you to recite three slokas at a time. Okay, so one video has three slokas. So that means you have to learn three slokas with the English and say three slokas. Okay, <laughs> bit of pressure is good sometimes. <laughs> now, if you're really struggling with that, then speak to me. We can we could perhaps do two, you know. And if you're really struggling with that, <laughs> you can speak to me. But you understand it clearly. So you, what you do is you. I find it easier that way than coming before someone and then having to recite three slokas live, so to speak. Because in your own time, you can get it wrong. Then you don't recall that one. You just keep doing it until you got it. You understand? Later. Yeah, take <laughs> take two hundred and seven, <laughs> and then once you got it, then you send it. Yeah, that's so. This is so we're doing it a bit different because otherwise it's so difficult. If we've got all of you, you guys think there's forty five slokas to learn. So if you're all coming to one teacher to recite all the slokas, it gets a bit difficult to manage. So we're going to try it like that. Okay. All right, so next week we're going to share some, probably this week, I'll share those, no, I'll share it from next week, 
the little videos I've done to help you in the learning process, the, the Vedic way of learning slokas. So we'll go through that next week, okay? All right? I think there's 45 slokas to learn in total for the whole Bhakta Sastri. Okay? Um, Vaishnava behavior. Please behave very nicely. <laughs> like Vaishnavas. I didn't preach that. Uh, it's kind of assessed, you know. We take that into consideration as well. All right. So here's the number of assessments. Uh, open book essays. All right. There's three we're doing together. Closed book is two. Verses just 12. Okay. Just 12 slokas for this chapters one to six. Okay. Just 12 slokas. And you can see the rest is there. I think you have access to this on your student folder. You have access to this, I think. Yes, Jay Krishna. In terms of the materials, student, the, in terms of the materials, student handbook and all of the other different things that you'll need, you need to log into your Moodle account. And if you don't have one yet, then please get in contact with Mother Dibadatri Gorangi and uh, she'll be able to sign you up. She'll make you an account and you'll just have to sign in. There's a two-step process. You'll need um, a link first for our specific um, Moodle uh, group and you'll get that from her and then you'll have your personal pro profile as well that you can log into. So if you don't have that Moodle account yet, please do get in contact with her. And then on that app, you'll get all of your student information. I can just show you briefly. This is sort of what it looks like. And if you can see, this is the app and you'll have all of your things very nicely laid out. Just briefly show it in the all camera. Right, so that's the tripod looks like it'll fall over. No? It's good. It's okay. It's fine. It's like this. So please bear with us for this. As you say, we're going through quite a few details of orientation, but next week it'd be a bit more clearer, yeah? We're just taking you through the tech, you know, the do's and don'ts and et cetera. But hopefully from perhaps the end of this class, we can begin definitely next week. Okay. All right. Closed book test. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a shame I was not here. It says 10 to 15 minutes. That is wrong. Okay. <laughs> this closed book test, uh, I think it's longer than that. I think it's a couple of hours. Yeah. Hour and a half. Okay. Um, around 10 questions. Yeah. 10 questions from that self study. From that self study, there'd be around 10 questions from that. Yeah. And then you answer that. Um, analogies as well, we ask for. That's also there in the self-study questions. Underneath is the yeah. analogies. Analogies, okay. Deadline, strongly recommended as per class schedule. Penalty, apply for late submission after the end of the unit. So you want to try and submit... Your close, there is a time that you should submit your closed book yeah, uh, assessment. Okay, is that clear, everyone? Okay, Hare Krishna. Open book essays. So, so here's the words, five or 600 words, okay? It's not much, is it? No, five or 600 words. So there's a, there's a number of, yeah, we shall... I shall let you know, it says uh, essay questions chosen by the lecturer for the open book assessments. So I shall communicate that with you. It will be communicated with you by the end of this week, perhaps by the end of today. Yeah, open book essay questions. Is that clear? Is that clear, Bobby? Is that good? Yeah. All right. Verse recitation, we've just been through that. You have 45 slokas. Yeah, so it's here, minimum three to four at a time, okay? And you can do, so you have one year. You've got one year to get those slokas down, okay? But don't leave it to the last, uh, <laughs> don't uh, don't leave it to the last section, okay? Because there'll be, be a lot of pressure on it. So try and just do the 12 slokas, in these next 10 weeks, if you can. And if you're inspired, you can do more. 
but at least you want to do it the first 12, okay? Okay. Get your notes if you'd like. Uh -huh. I can get your notes up there. I don't have any notes for here. It's the That's next okay. section. Yeah, the aims. Yeah, the aims I need it for. Okay, I was so pin. Can you see if um, can you go and find Deepa Dattri Mobi? She can come in on this. Send her a message. Yeah, send a message. Okay. Now here it says sixteen rounds, regulated principles, things like that. Um, you heard of these? Yes. <laughs> sure. Now. Um, this is really if you want if you want to get a certificate and send a sit the exam, this is required, okay. But if there's some issues, something, please come and speak to us. You know, we can make we can see what your personal situation is, okay. But this C says I B E X. That's the ISCOM board of examination. Yeah, all the courses, all the battery sashtri courses that are taught in the ISKCON world, in all the countries of the world, we all function under IBEX. Yeah, they're, they're the ones who give the certificates, or, yeah, as such, and then we sign it off. And this is what is required. Okay. Any questions about this? Yeah. Yes, Bobby, please. Can you talk about the third point. The entire engaged in the preaching Yeah. Some of you may be engaged. Some of you may be full time engaged. But it's good if you can be. It's not absolutely required. Like, we're not going to keep checks on you. <laughs> did you distribute any books last week or did you go to a program last week? We're just trying to encourage you, you know? It's good if you can be involved in a preaching mission. Again, this is coming from I B E X. Okay. You know, even if it means coming to the temple, taking part in the kirtans, things like that, you know. So we're not really gonna follow you around like that, you know. But it is, yes, please. Um, I don't have a mention. You don't, yeah. So this is yeah. Yeah. So we can we be acting as your mentors here, all right? For the for the part of this study. Okay, how do you go, Shrava? Can I help you? Are you uh, taking part in a back to Sashtri or you just happen to come this way? Oh, if I'm in Solo, I could come here and visit. <laughs> very nice. So, uh, how do you go, Shrava? That's how I will. Very nice. Thank you very much. Did you see the temple room? So, I don't know if it's this temple or if it's another yeah. one. Is yeah, you could, another one there? could take her to the temple room. Yeah, would, you probably walk past the temple itself. Ah. The uh, temple room. So we'll show you the temple. <laughs> she could have just sat down and joined back to Sashkul. <laughs> Did that answer your question, Bobby? Yes. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yourself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, All right. That's one more. Yeah, there's another question. Yeah, please. Um, what is now there's an exam or it's like part of the No, it's um we get certification to run this course coming from IBX. Yeah. Hi, hi Krishna. Um Muli Monopo is Yeah, Dattri. please. We'll, we'll I'm need on you help, Zoom. Yeah? Sorry, I'm driving. Yeah. How uh, can I help? Keep your eyes on the road. Yeah, I've parked up. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, um, can yeah. Just here um Bobby just asked a relevant question. Let's see if I answered it correctly. We're on Vaishnav behavior. And it says, favorably engaged in the preaching mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for at least 12 months. So some students may not come up to that criteria. Can you just take us through that? Are we going to... Um, is, that is that absolutely required? I think not, but go on. Not really. It's not required. It's... Um... We would like it, yes, but it's not mandatory, no. All right, okay. And the other one, um, you said you don't have a mentor. Where's that required here? Uh, second line on the screen. Okay. Mentor set by that. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so for the um, IBEX certification, um, we need uh, 
preferably a mentor or if you don't have a mentor your temple authority someone who can you know who can support you in a sense so that could be us yeah yeah that could be you yeah 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 okay or over the next year i actively seek a mentor what, uh, uh, yeah well we can take if yeah this year yeah mm -hmm. so what about these um 16 rounds of regular dip principles can you just take us through that does that mean they um well my full mit that's their requirement um but i guess we can be a bit lenient and um maybe okay. if we can work towards it maybe we can just see how the students are progressing along the way and then go from there. Again, it's this is something that teaches discretion. Okay, you got that. Yeah, so hopefully, we, if you're not charting 16 rounds, hopefully by the end of one year, you can be charting 32 rounds. <laughs> <laughs> 16, okay. Hopefully, we'll inspire you, you know. So let's we'll, we'll work together, you know. All right. Any questions, Carmen? Okay. Yeah, like it says here, yeah? Okay. Okay, open book essays, introduction, yeah. Um, yeah, please, um, sometimes when it comes to the open book essays, okay, sometimes students can write so much and put so much in there, which is not really needed, okay? The some some of the questions just need a one sentence answer all right and as you go for the self-study questions you will identify in Prabhupada's purple where he might give the answer in just one sentence so you could just put that one sentence yeah no need to put anything more just really answer the question yeah sometimes students answer the so much you know when they just really need to answer specifically the question again if it's not sure you can always speak to us yeah and you can help there it was requirement of 500 words right so we don't need to put 500 just one sentence no that's for the this is the um let's get this right this is for the open book as no let me get this right sorry this is for the open book assessment which is the essay excuse me I just commented on the closed book assessment. That's the one where you might, in your self-study, you might find the answer being one question. Okay, thank you. Is that clear? I just made a mistake there, yeah. This is speaking about the essay question of 500 or 600 words, you know? Yeah, about the essay, they, that's, just, um, that's just a maximum. The main point of the essays is that you have to hit the key points whatever the question is asking you to do um five six hundred is the maximum word but if you can answer the question theoretically in 300 words 400 words that's even that's even better and in terms of the questions like muli Manoa Prabhu said um it's all from the self-studies so i would highly recommend you guys go through the self-studies and um they're all multiple choice questions and um, yeah, there's no questions where you have to write or anything. It's all multiple choice. Oh, okay. Multiple choice. So that makes it easier for you. Okay. If I think that uh, one sentence is enough, is it enough? Or I need to... No, you need to... Uh, but no, the questions will need more than one sentence for the open book essays. Yeah. And we go through what's called the 12... Such strict study aims will help you understand that more. Okay. All right. Yes, please. So where during lockdown, a friend and I, we were just accessing some ISKCON back instruction videos and kind of studying ourselves just privately. Yeah. And I was writing essays of maybe three or four sheets of A4, you know, so that would be a bit excessive. Kind of yeah, please try point. and keep it because uh, we have the market. <laughs> so if you can keep it to be a bit more precise, just keep that in mind. Put put the word count on your computer, you know, so you can get to 500. Try your best to keep it like that. Always could you know, whole book you could write. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um yeah, uh, Sastric Aims are going to be covering now. I think I'm going to look at that now. Let's see. Yeah, so here they are. So here's the 
Sastric Ames. Uh, I'm going to go through these. I'm going to stop sharing this and share something else. Ooh, I'm going to come here. Come over there. And separate display, isn't it? Use a separate display and share this here. Uh -huh. this top two. Yeah, two. Wait, did you share it? Yeah. Ah, I've shared it. Hmm. You're trying to yeah. what do you think? What you want to do? Share. Huh? Oh no, it's a what? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Ram Ram. I'm online, I can see it. You can see it, yeah? So let me... Yeah, you can see it, yeah. Yes. Right, great. Any questions online? No? Okay. Please raise your hand if you have questions. Okay, let me do it. There, 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 there. That's, oh, that's not showing. Sure, okay. Yes. All right. How's how's everyone doing? Okay. Let's just let's just stand up. Let's just stand up. Everyone stand up. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, you can sit down now. Hare Krishna. Everyone online, I hope you joined in for that. Hare Krishna. So please bear with us. Um, Let's just go through these. Now, these are going to be these are going to be relevant to your to your open book assessment. Okay. So the Iskon Bhakta Sastri, we have these 12 Sastric aims, okay, which we're helping, which we're hoping you're going to go away with and imbibe during this Bhakta Sastri teaching. So number one is memory and recall okay so here you see in red k n o all right during for your closed for your open book assessment excuse me what the questions will have this code by it so you know what is being asked of you okay so knowledge memory and recall so we Perhaps someone could read this for us. Perhaps we have someone online could read. Perhaps online you can read through these, okay? So we have, hopefully you can see it. If someone could unmute online and read. To help students memorize and record the theoretical knowledge, which forms the foundation of their ongoing progress in Krishna consciousness. Okay, so this is means basically means we're going to be helping you to learn slokas. Also, we're helping you to learn specific aspects and points of Srila Prabhupada's purports as well, okay? So that when you're speaking to people, you can actually refer to slokas, refer to a purple in Prabhupada's book, or if you're explaining Krishna consciousness to someone, something that you've read, something that you've took note of, something that you've discussed, it comes to mind and you can use it in your preaching, yeah, or you're speaking to people, all right? So that's one of the aims for this study that we're doing, okay? And next one here, if it moves. Hare Krishna. Okay, someone online could read this one for us. Understanding. Yeah. yeah. To deepen students' understanding of the Krishna consciousness theology, 
particularly through studying it from a wide range of perspectives and through developing thoughtfulness and introspection. All right. So, for example, one of your open book assessments, the question might have this beside it, UND, understanding. So that question requires that you then approach it through this, yeah? Like here. So um, so we'll be, we'll be looking at specific points that we'll be discussing amongst ourselves to get a deeper understanding of what, of what Prabhupada says, okay? So from, from different perspectives. Prabhupada wanted us to learn his books from different perspectives. Yeah, to look at it from different angles of vision so we can have a very clear understanding, okay? All right, and... And the next one. So on online again, we want to keep you engaged online. So you can read this one, number three. Personal application. Yeah, P-E-A, okay? This is a very important one. Go on. to, help, to help students apply the Krishna conscious theology with uh, reference to A, their external practices, B, their internal development, and to help them develop appropriate Vaishnava qualities and behaviors. All right, so this is uh, more of a common one that's going to be there with your open book assessment. So you're going to look at specific philosophical points and you're going to relate it to your personal life and give examples, yeah? And then you write that, how what it actually means to you in this specific situation, yeah? I was in this situation in my life and this happened and that happened and then I could see Krishna's direction and it very much helped me, you understand? So this is very much important that we just that that we don't want you just to go away with book knowledge. Yeah, we want to help you to assimilate the philosophy and to apply the philosophy. Yeah. And you may reflect back in your life with different events and different situations that you are in, and how the philosophy of Krishna consciousness helping you to develop. Yeah. So that's some personal application. Yeah. That, that one is one of the more common ones you're going to find in the open book assessments for all, not just Bhagavad Gita, Nectar Instruction, Isha Upanishad. You'll be asked for these open book assessment questions for obviously all the books we're studying. And this is a common one, personal application. How does it apply? How does this philosophical point apply to you personally? And then you're going to write. It's very good, actually. It's very um, nice. Yeah. Okay. So we go through these, and then we'll have a break for 10 or 15 minutes, okay? So. Um, online, you can read this one. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. To enhance devotees' desire and ability to preach effectively. Okay, so I'll just read a few bullet points here. To select scriptural references appropriate to the topic. Yeah, so specific points to present, then you can hopefully we can refer to different scriptural quotes. Bhagavad Gita says this, Isha Upanishad says this, Nectar Devotion says this. Okay, so applying, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's good to express our sastric understanding in our own words. Yeah, be careful with that in your um, open book assessments. Um, I've got quite used over the years to being able to tell when someone is just copied and pasted. <laughs> and also now we have AI. Okay, so please... <laughs> Don't just put a question into chat boot for an essay of 500 words because um, I've now learned to recognize it. Okay, it doesn't take much. And because we teach in Mayapur as well, and sometimes a couple of students are just 
try to present something from chat boot and you know it, <laughs> so please don't do that you may if you want get some ideas but please put in your own words you know express it yourself yeah uh, so okay in your own words okay all right we got to go on a bit so next one oh I've gone back let's go this five so I could read this Someone online, go ahead. You want to keep um, your line? Faith and conviction in the process of Krishna consciousness and in Shastra as its foundation. Yeah, so students should be able to demonstrate faith in Shastra. I think some of you mentioned that you want to come in together to discuss, to increase your faith in Krishna consciousness. Should be able to describe how the practices and principles in, included in scripture work for them personally not simply for for everyone else um demonstrate thoughtfulness and consideration in their approach towards scripture okay so we have to yeah, demonstrate understanding realization of sastra so faith and conviction next one wrong way okay online again Someone who's not spoken online, please you can unmute and read through this. Authority, AUT, to simultaneously cultivate within devotees a wholehearted acceptance of the spiritual authority of Shastra, b a mood of open and honest inquiry, and a desire to factually understand and realize the import of Vedic knowledge. Okay. Number seven. Just go through these quick. Again online. Um, theological application to help create learned Vaishnava theologians who are expert in assisting the society through application of Shastric knowledge to a wide range of personal, social, moral, topical, and theological issues. Okay, so we're hoping to get some theologians here. You have a deep study of the scripture and be able to help people in life, you know. Help people to share this knowledge in a thoughtful and considerate way. I'm sure some of you are doing that anyway. It might be someone in your family or someone you know passes away. Then you can share how to share your knowledge in a suitable way that's going to help them. Yeah. So theological application. Yeah. People looking for shelter, people looking for guidance in this world. So many reversals, sir. so many things don't go as they should go. So people are looking for help. So good, you're studying now. Bhagavad Gita over this next year helps to give you the tools and the knowledge to be able to apply practically. Evaluation, again online. Evaluation, um, to develop students' analytical interpretative and evaluative skills, particularly in the respect of the practical application of Sastric knowledge. Okay, so determine the merits of any action or response to a particular situation. Demonstrate awareness of the need to consider the consequences of any action. So you can evaluate the principles which we're learning here. Number nine, this one is a more common one as well that's used a lot for the open book assessment. Someone online could read this. You can go twice if you want online, if you've already read. Mood no. and mission, M plus M, to facilitate devotees in A, understanding and appreci appreciating the mood and mission of Srila Prabhupada. B, perpetuating the, that understanding within the society and its members. Okay, so if you read Prabhupada's books and you see that as we study Bhagavad Gita and the other books, you're going to pick up, if you haven't done already, Prabhupada has a specific mood of Prabhupada, a specific mission. So some of the open book questions, you're going to answer it according to this principle. What is the mood and mission of Prabhupada in this statement here? Yeah, and then you're, then you're going to explain. 
mood and mission Jennifer Prabhupada is normally to share Krishna consciousness to make it available to others. So that's how you can present. Okay. And three more. Perhaps the last three will have some on site reading. So someone here could read number 10. Academic and moral integrity. Uh, AMI to ensure that devotees oh to ensure that devotes devotees develop moral and academic integrity in the interpretation evaluation and application of shastric knowledge okay so we should have integrity we should be walking the we should be was it talking walking yeah. walking walking the talk yeah we'll find that preaching will be more as uh, sharing of krishna country will be a lot more effective okay and then again on site here i'm calling it go it's ahead it's a big it's a it's a fairy monster oh that's it <laughs> responsibility for learning rfl to encourage students to take responsibility for their learning and develop and develop healthy study habits by a enhancing their desire to study Srila Prabhupada's books particularly by nurturing their appreciation of Sastra and Sastric study, and by demonstrating Sastra's relevance to everyday life. B, equipping them with appropriate learning skills. All right, and finally, we have this one here. You can reach us behind you. Hi, Krishna. Uh, Twelve. Shakshu Kaksus. Shakshu. Shakshu. Shakshu, sorry. Um, to equip students with the ability to see through the eyes of Shastra and with a Krishna consciousness worldview. Ultimately, to assist the students in realizing scripture and in seeking Krishna at all times and in all places. All right. So I hope that wasn't too detailed, too technical. But what we've just shared with you is the aims of iskon in teaching any of its courses bhakta sastri bhakti vai baba bhakta shalva teacher training these are the aims that devotees or that we want to achieve in when we're offering these different courses okay and some of these preaching application mood and mission will be required to answer the close open books open book assessments in that light okay all right so we will have a break now i hope that's okay yes <laughs> so let's get together at 12 15 okay so I'll give you 15 minutes you can relax a bit you know and uh Hare krishna there's some water there if you want you can take some water or you can if you got any questions you can come and ask me now if something's not clear we do <laughs> It's so, oh, come back at 12.15, okay? Yes. I'm here. If, if any have any questions, something's not clear, please feel free to approach me. Hare Krishna. Everyone online, please tune back in with us at 12.15. Hare Krishna. <laughs> London, I think you can that as well. Every now and then you could just like, you know, look at the camera. Okay, 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 yeah, okay, it's important. Okay, yeah, because I'm teaching, I'm, yeah, okay, great. Yeah, I was completely unaware of that. Yeah, okay, great, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare. Om 
Hmm. I think I, I registered by for the wrong model because it was mentioned first. All right. Yeah. Is it all right? <laughs> yeah, well you're here now. Um so you just registered for one module, Isha Bandashad. I didn't know it's bug or be because mentioned number one. Uh, number one is, uh, yeah, Bhagavad Gita we start with, but I think it changed uh, Ishapanishad or Nectar of Destruction. That's what changed. So you want to speak to, um, you want to speak to Padatri, Mataji, the one who you registered with? You registered online for Ishapanishad? Yes. So that same person, you need to find out her when, when it's starting. Oh, you're quite welcome if you're here now. I don't know. Speak, speak to her. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, if you're inspired to take part in Bhagavad Gita here, this one, you're welcome to Hare Krishna. Yes, we... Oh, my text up here. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Jai Krishna, Guru. Jai Krishna. Go. Yeah, if he's there. I just want to finish show this slide. So I'm going to show this slide, and I just want to just refer them to this as an example of this uh, sastric aims, for example. You know. So I'm going to start off just by going back on here. So set up now. Good if we can learn this. I guess it's my incompetence, but it's good if we can, yeah. Now, this is just, I'm going to be showing this to everyone now on the line. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I just want to. All right. Okay. So I was it a lot of it. Yeah. Yes. So, no, that's. Why is it done? Yeah, that's, that's the thing. So, how I share screen with Yes. Yeah. Share screen. Do I share this one? Yeah, just try to share this. Yeah. Share. And then on desktop, I bring up this. Yes. So they can see that. No, no. There's something that you generally do when you go into the. Uh, these aren't slides. These no. These are these are just. Uh, oh, these are just PDF. Not, okay, then we have to mirror the screen. Sorry, okay. this is a slide. Mirror the screen. Yes. So now they can now they can see that. So now everyone online can see that. Yeah. Okay. So you just now we wanna 
do the seam. Yeah. I want to just share this as well. So that's the same. It's not yeah. a zero discrete. You just click on that and it'll be okay. Okay. Yeah. You can do the job. Hare Krishna, I'm late. We're all here. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Everyone back online. We all made it back. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, so just a couple more slides on this uh, orientation presentation, just for your information. Here you can see, let's make this a bit bigger for you. Here's a breakdown of the markings and certificate, okay? Hope this is not like being back in school for some of you, <laughs> or back in university, but it's for Krishna. So it's wonderful. So here's the breakdown for the open book assessment. You see it's quite weighty. 52% of the mark, all right? Closed book, a little bit less, 25%. Memorization of, memorization of verses, 15%. Um, but a class attendance, 7.5% uh, of the mark, okay? Now, this part at the end, this is a bit more clear for you, okay? If you don't happen to come up to the mark of the 16 rounds for regulative principles, you can still sit the exam and you will get a certificate from us. We will give you a certificate. It won't be an official IBX because that's their standards, okay? Is that clear? Okay. Just want to make that. So any questions online, please feel free to ask. Now, just want to show you here as an example. The aims, here's an example of the a question. This one's always a bit of a lively question. This is academic and moral integrity. So the question will, could be, discuss what is meant by women are generally not very intelligent and therefore not trustworthy. It's a discussion. It's a live discussion. It's quite an exciting discussion. Prabhupada's made these statements. How do we understand it so that's where you're going to academic and moral integrity you understand the next one preaching application as discussed appropriate and inappropriate application of the principle you utility of violence in relation to the battle of crew etc and current issues of religious violence so that's preaching application you have to write an essay on that in your own words, five or six hundred words on that. So that you can't answer with just one sentence, okay? You've got to think about applying, applying what you're learning to the issues going on in the world. And that's a common question. You know, battle, the battle crew, etc. So so does that mean all battles going on today? You know, you get the idea? Because they're fighting on religious principles, no? Islam, they're you know, we're fighting for Allah. Is that the same as fighting in battle crew, etc.? No. <laughs> Why not? Then you I'm not answering right now. Yes. I'm not going to get into it right now. Just an example of some of the discussions that we'll be having together and some of the open book assessments. Yeah. Personal application. Evaluate the relevance. I've been told to look at the camera sometimes here to make sure. Everyone online, so communicate with you online. Make sure you feel part of it. Okay. Discuss, uh, no, um, e evaluate the relevance of the karma kanda division of the Vedas in the practice of Krishna consciousness with reference to verses and analogies from Bhagavad Gita. So personal application. You get the idea? Mood and mission. Discuss the importance of following Vanashram Dham in relationship to the development of ISKCON. So it's quite, you have to think about it. You know, you have to think about it a bit. And you might quote from scripture, you might put the quote then in your own words, like that. Okay? So I thought just to show you an example of the questions in applying that aims. Okay? Hare Krishna. Any questions from that? All right. Now... We're finally going to start Bhagavad Gita. All right. So let me um, 
Please um, bear with us. I have to change a few now. I should be getting used to this. Screen mirror, a separate display. Bring it up here. Play. You can see Bhagavad Gita behind me? Mm -hmm. yes. You can see Bhagavad Gita online? No. 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 Oh, no. That comes out of it. That take you out of it. Just a quick question while you're doing that. Please, please. yes. Um, did you mention about different uh, past levels? Is there like distinction or is it just past male or are there different? Oh, uh, good uh, question. Um, I don't know. I'll have to get back to you on that. I think it's the top of my head. I think it's um, 60%, 65% is a pass. But I'll confirm that with you. You want to speak to Deepa Dutri. It's a good question. Like. Okay, everyone online, you can see a slide that says Bhagavad Gita preface. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, everyone can see here. And some of you might have Bhagavad Gita. Hands up if you have Bhagavad Gita with you. If you want, you can refer to that. We have some, uh, for lunch, we have some rotten bananas. <laughs> Over there. We're feeling a bit hungry, some brahmachari bananas. They look, bad, okay. they look bad, they're very sweet, okay? All right. Now then, normally um, Bhagavad Gita, the Bhakta Sastri, starts with chapter one, all right? It doesn't start with the preface or the introduction. So I'm adding this, and I hope you don't mind. I think it's very important, um, especially Prabhupada's in introduction is quite profound. So there won't be, so you won't be asked any questions on this, yeah. But I find I think it's quite important. I find it quite enlivening. So I'm going to give a little overview of the preface and definitely an overview of the introduction because it's quite large. I said that I asked you to read it. Did anyone read the introduction? You did. Great. We have three hands raised. Four. Anyone online? Did you read the introduction? Yeah, yes, he did. So I think there's something like 68 paragraphs where Prabhupada gives a whole kind of dissertation on the whole philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Yeah. So we'll look at that. We won't discuss every detail of what he's presented. Everyone can hear me okay? All right. So let's look at the preface. Um now, everyone, come and tell us what a preface is to a book. Anyone have any idea what it means, a preface? A preface. So we have someone online who's writing a book on Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, we, if we know, can tell us your idea of a preface in the book. It well, like... uh, preface probably oh. means, sorry, Dave. Go on, carry on. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, I'm just sort of, I think actually logically it probably means, uh, Bifacere, which Latin is fasciere, is means, means to make. Yeah. Um, so it is the it, it is it is the it's the thing before the core item. Yeah, it's yeah. It's like um, the reason for making something. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. The reason for making something. So, so uh, sorry, go on. I interrupted you. Bifacere. No, no, no. So, so yeah, Latin would be sort of um, the thoughts behind the exercise. As it were. Yeah, correct. So, thank you for that. For yeah, so it's a section of the book that it introduces the author and explains a bit about the background of specifically the printing and the writing of Bhagavad Gita. And Prabhupada gives a little bit of a background. Yeah. Now, Prabhupada did write Bhagavad Gita before he came over to the West. But it got stolen, actually. So, yeah, it was taken. It just got stolen. So, and we have a nice little video which we're going to play of Brahmananda, who's going to share with us the scenario and the events of the first printing of the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, it was printed by Macmillan Company. 
And it was just a um, small part of Bhagavad Gita. Anyway, we're going to hear that now. Um, yeah, I just read the first what Prabhupada says first. Originally, I wrote Bhagavad Gita as it is in the form which is presented now. Okay. Yeah. When the book was first published, the original was cut short to 400 pages. All right. Without illustrations, without explanations for most of the original verses. So let's hear the story behind that. It's quite. Hopefully you're going to hear this. So then uh, came then uh, to I publish Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada was so determined to publish it, but there was no money to print it ourselves. And uh, anyway, uh, Allen Ginsberg, who was, uh, in front, although he wasn't a... Vaishnava wasn't a devotee, I mean, he had his own lifestyle, but he was very sympathetic. He had been to India, he liked chanting. Prabhupada instructed him, chant Hare Krishna before your poet, before you do any poetry reading, and he used to do that. He gave Prabhupada the first harmonium, which he had brought from India, and uh, he would give donations, and the immigration things he was helping. And, Anyway, uh, when the manuscript was ready for printing, uh, Alan, uh, uh, we gave it to Alan, and uh, he was very enthusiastic. He sent it to his publishers, but uh, they rejected it. And then he sent it to some other publishers in Europe. Again, everyone rejected it. And after about six months of trying it, and he, he just lost interest. Everyone was rejecting it. So then uh, Prabhupada gave the manuscript to Ray Ramana, who was the editor of the Back to Godhead. And uh, so he tried, and he was sending it around to academic publishers. And again, everyone rejected it. You know, you get those letter in the mouth. Thank you very much. However, this doesn't fit into our plans and this and that and everything. So then after that signal, then he gave up. He, he's, you know. So then Prabhupada gave it to me to do. Anyway, by that time, I had absolutely no faith that this was, because uh, I could see that there was no commercial um, commercial value to this manuscript. I mean, every page there was Krishna consciousness, Krishna consciousness. And I was thinking, well, if you're not Krishna conscious, you're not interested in Krishna consciousness, you're not going to be interested in this this commentary. And it's, there's, no, there's no fancy poetry or scholarly, you know, the footnotes and academics. And, and I had read uh, you know, different Bhagavad Gita's, no esoteric things, and um, so uh, I, I just had no faith. I didn't know what to do. I was going to, uh, to bookstores and trying to see how they were doing and, and to learn how to get a book published. And I was going to the library and reading and trying to find out how to do this. And But I didn't know what to do. So uh, in the meantime, Prabhupada had recorded the record, the Hare, Hare Krishna record, which uh, eventually the Beatles got that uh, interested them when they heard that record. And uh, the record was doing, there was a lot of interest. And so very nice, uh, one radio station played it all night long. For 10 hours, they played the record over and over again. WBAI, one of these alternative radio stations. So um, we were advertising the record in different kind of uh, underground publications. Uh, an order came for the record one day. I used to get the mail and then bring it up to Prabhupada. We'd go over it together. <laughs> he would dictate and I would take notes answer letters and so on. 
So uh, one order came for a record, uh, and it was uh, the letter was from the Macmillan Company, you know, big publisher uh, worldwide. So uh, and it, it was on this letterhead, Macmillan letterhead. So and so was ordering a record album with a check, and 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 uh, I rushed up to Prabhupada. So probably someone is from the milk and, you know, I mean, I didn't know what to do. We were, you know, helpless. Probably had to tell us everything. So, uh, Prabhupada said, well, he thought for a while, and then he said, uh, you bring the record tomorrow, you bring it to the person, personally, and you tell that uh, you have a Bhagavad Gita that you want to publish. And I said, well, okay, I, wish, I don't know, should I bring the manuscript? No, just tell them. And I said, well, uh, okay, and, but I have to say something about you as the, the, the author. Maybe I should bring some of the other books you published, like from India, the books you uh I've already published in my Bible. And he said, no, just tell them that you have a Bhagavad Gita to publish. And I said, okay. So the next day I went up to, I got dressed up in a shirt and tie and uh, went uptown to uh, uh, they have a skyscraper in the film company. And uh, the person who, who I was giving the record to was an accountant. Had nothing to do with really publishing. He was just adding numbers. And I'm sitting there and I'm trying to think, well, what how am I gonna well, gonna tell him? You know, what am I gonna tell him? So um, anyway, we're talking something about the record and the mantra and so on. And uh, I'm kind of sitting there bewildered and uh, and then the door opens and in walks someone, and he, uh, all of a sudden, he, he very formally, he says, well, I'd like to introduce you to, and uh, this is James Wade, he's our senior editor, and this is me. So, uh, and I, I just shook hands with Mr. Wade, and I just looked him right in the face, I said, uh, I have a Bhagavad Gita to publish. <laughs> He said, a Bhagavad Gita by, by a Swami, an Indian Swami, living here in New York. He, he did this himself. I said, yes. He said, complete the entire Bhagavad Gita. I, I said, yes, yes. And he said, well, that's exactly what I'm looking for <laughs> to fill out our religion section. I got Buddhism, we have... You know, we have um, the Quran, we, we have everything. We don't have a Bhagavad Gita. I need a Bhagavad Gita. Can, can you, you want us to publish? Well, we'll publish it. We'll publish it. And uh, I couldn't believe what was happening. I mean, he actually agreed to publish it. He didn't even see the manuscript. Every, everyone else had, uh, had rejected it for whatever reason. And here he is accepting it without even seeing it. I mean, I couldn't even believe it. I, I, I just flew back down to Prabhupada and uh, told him the news. I was so excited. And Prabhupada was, it was like he was expecting it. Prabhupada just nodded. Nice, Prabhupada Kijai. It's a very nice set. Uh, so if you look in the preface, Prabhupada is speaking about that in the beginning, where he says, originally I wrote Bhagavad Gita as it is in the form of that is presented now. This with Iskon Press. Yeah. When this this when this book was first published, the original manuscript was unfortunately cut short to less than 400 pages. Because that's what Mac, Mac, Mac Millen wanted it to be less just to be 400 pages, without illustrations, without explanations for most of the original verses 
of Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. So that was the first edition, the Macmillan Bhagavad Gita, and that's the story behind it. And then eventually, Prabhupada, uh, the devotees established the first what's called Iskon Press, and that's when they printed the complete Bhagavad Gita. All right. Eventually, the Iskon Press became the BBT Bhaktivedanta Book Trust. All right. So that you're going to read. That's what Prabhupada's referring to in the beginning. Uh, but very nice that Prabhupada seemed to know it's Krishna's divine arrangement. Yeah, that's Brahmananda. He speaks a little bit more on it. We just gave you a little section. If you're going to read Prabhupada, watch Prabhupada memories, Brahmananda. Okay. So then the preface is relatively short compared to the uh, introduction. Prabhupada establishes the authenticity of the Bhagavad Gita, which you will find he will do throughout, especially in the introduction about the authenticity and the historic how it is his historically he's historically authorized, excuse me. Prabhupada speaks about that. And he speaks about it being transcendental. So what does transcendental mean? I'll ask you the question. Yes, Bobby. Above the most material nature. Yeah, above the most material nature. Yeah. So Bhagavad Gita is above the most material nature. So he's called it Bhagavad Gita as it is. And interesting, Prabhupada says is gradually, this was back in the early days of ISKCON. Uh, I'm not sure what year, but in the very early days, Prabhupada says, uh, is gradually becoming the most popular movement in the entire world. <laughs> yeah, especially among the younger generation. Yeah, because as we know, when Prabhupada was first preaching, it was the younger generation that were coming to him. So Prabhupada mentions that in the preface. Um, now he mentions as well again about his why he gave Bhagavad Gita earlier on. Um, Prabhupada says some of some of them have said that it's greatly fortunate that Americans that have started this Krishna conscious movement in America. But actually, the original father of the movement is who? Lord Krishna. Yeah. Since it was started a very long time ago. Yeah. And then he gives credit to his spiritual master, who is Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur. It's generally going to find this with all Vaishnav writers and preach scholars. Before they write anything, they naturally give respect to the spiritual masters. So Prabhupada does that there in the preface. Um, if yeah, and Prabhupada would often say this as well when persons would come to him and try and offer him some praise about what he's achieved. Prabhupada himself would not accept any credit. Yeah? But what he would say, if there's any credit that you can give me, is because I presented Bhagavad Gita without any change, without any adulteration. Yeah? That's why he's called it Bhagavad Gita as it is. You understand? Because generally, because Bhagavad Gita is such a renowned book, then anyone who has a particular philosophy, it does them well to give their own commentary on Bhagavad Gita. But then they will change the meaning or the import of the Bhagavad Gita to put their philosophy forward. So that's why Prabhupada presented his book, Bhagavad Gita, as it is. So he's being a bit sarcastic there. <laughs> He's saying any other Bhagavad Gita is not as it is, you know. And so, have a, there's another study presentation we do about that as well. And where some scholars they complain about Prabhupada's presentation of Bhagavad Gita. For example, um, one scholar says, um, here in a verse, it doesn't refer to Krishna, but here, Prabhupada in the translation, he is referring to Krishna. It seems like Prabhupada. But sees Krishna everywhere in the Bhagavad Gita. 
but it's true. And as we as we're going to go through the Bhagavad Gita, I'm going to help you to see how Prabhupada gives his Sanskrit translation of the verses so that we can understand the ultimate purpose of Krishna. Even sometimes he will translate the verses in a Sanskrit way, which is not there. So we'll take you through that. Prabhupada's purpose is the means to that. All right? Go Papa's translation of the Bhagavad Gita. And history speaks for itself as well. Bhagavad Gita is the as it is, is the most widely sold. It's the one that's used now in Cambridge, Oxford. For anyone who studies Hinduism, the Bhagavad Gita as it is is the fundamental top uh book that they have to study. Yeah, that's thanks to our faculty in Oxford as well. Yeah, so um, and then Prabhupada, yeah, Prabhupada, let's just read here. People in general, especially in this age of Kali, are enamored by the external energy of Krishna, and they wrongly think that by advancement of material comforts, every man will be happy. They have no knowledge that the material or external nature is very strong. For everyone is strongly bound by the stringent laws of material nature. So Baba gives that. And then he says, based on that, we hope, therefore, that people will derive the greatest benefit by studying the Bhagavad Gita as it as we have presented. Then Prabhupada says, even if one man becomes fully Krishna conscious, we will consider our work to be successful. Yeah. And he's signed A.C. Bhaktivedan to Swami Prabhupada. Let me just see here. Um, 12th of May, 1971, in Sydney, Australia. All right, so that's the preface. Any questions or observations about that? But very nice bit of information, how it came about. The first edition, 400 pages, okay? Yeah, such Kumar Nimai. Uh, it might be a little pedantic for a good one. Um, you're saying there that if Prabhupada said if one man becomes Krishna conscious, I'm thinking, is that also one woman? <laughs> yeah, mankind. If one person in mankind, scans, yeah, so, yeah. And Prabhupada speaks in the, that term, he's meaning mankind, you know? Women also part of mankind. <laughs> okay. Holy Vishnu. You have to let me know if there's any online any questions you please um unmute and ask or put it in the chat for jay krishna here so again preface is not you won't be asked questions on that but i thought it's interesting and also i think some of some of you are probably familiar with the setting of the bhagavad gita um we won't read through that but for your interest setting the scene now i've been reading bhagavad gita for over 30 years and I still read this, setting the scene. Because Bhagavad Gita comes in Mahabharata, and there's a Mahabharata war, and there's a whole, there's a whole intrigue. And the, the first chapter that you're going to see is generally going to be a lot of Mahabharata, okay? This is the first chapter. So if you want for your information, setting the scene speaks about how it came to be that Krishna is speaking Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna, on the battle of crew, etc. All right, it's only two pages, it's good to read. Okay, and then we come to the introduction. Okay, let's move some slides here. Okay, so I was going through this. I mean, I've read the introduction a few times and I was, wasn't too sure exactly how I'm going to present it here. Shall I give a little summary of it? And um, in the end, I spent about four or five hours <laughs> trying to write down main points that Prabhupada covers in his introduction. There's 68, roughly 68 paragraphs. But um, remember, I asked if you could read again, show of hands of those who read through it or had read through it, the introduction online as well. Some of you had your hands up. 
So we'll just begin with perhaps if any of you might like to share anything which caught your attention, something which was like from the introduction. I think there's a lot there, but I think the question was you might I might be putting you on the spot. It's such a good money, Michael. Uh, the bit that always sticks out for me, and it stuck out this time when I read it as well, was the conversation about Sanatan Dharma. Uh, that is yeah. eternal. Um, that Sanatan means that which doesn't have a, doesn't have an end, and uh, how um, it's not to do with uh, limited uh, as a Muslim or a Christian or anything like that. Yeah, that comes towards the end of the introduction. It's a nice word to be familiar with, Sanatan Dharma. Yeah. So, what examples does Prabhupada give to explain Sanatan Dharma? Yes, Bobby. The, the spiritual relationship between soul and God. We're all souls. We're all Christian, where we're all souls. And that relationship is like the relationship between he and fire. They, they are separated. Yeah, great. That's exactly it. Like, um, whatever there's fire, there's heat. Mm -hmm. So the Dharma of the soul is to serve God. And it's a wonderful, I've used it so many times in preaching to people, this point. Sometimes you, you may present it in a certain way. I present it sometimes like, God, if I'm speaking to a Christian, I would say, God is not a Christian. Because mm -hmm. they think I'm a Hindu, I say, God's not a Hindu. Yeah, God's not a Buddhist. Yeah, then I would say, someone's faith can change. I would say, a Christian, if it's a Muslim, I say, a Christian can become a Muslim. And I smile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> then I say, a Muslim can become a Christian. They don't smile then. <laughs> But one's faith can change. But what cannot change is we're all parts and parcels of God. That's called Sunnah and Dham. Yeah, it's called Sunnah. And Prabhupada speaks about that. You know, it's a good point to know and to be able to, pre to present to people for them to understand what we're all about. Yeah, the soul, the, these are material designations. I'm English, I'm Christian, even. You know, All right. Any other pointers from the introduction? Otherwise, we'll go over a little bit as we can. Sorry, putting you on the spot. You can look if you well, yeah, go on. Mother. Yeah, the five topics of Bhagavad Gita, and I hope that's there. Quickly now, we'll cover it. The five topics is Ishvara, Jiva. Uh, Prakriti, Karma, Kala. Well done. Prabhupada spends about 60% of the 50, 60% of the introduction elaborating on that point. All right? So it's good. It's good. You know, the five subject matters of which is covered in the Bhagavad Gita. This is known as Sambandha Gyan. Yeah, we have Sambandha Gyan. Uh, Sambanda, so next one, Sambanda, Abhideya, and Bayojan. So, Sambanda means to understand who you are, understand, at least to whatever degree we can, the position of Ishvara, Krishna, understand this material energy and how they interact with each other. Yeah, that's called Sambanda again, knowledge of relationship. Yeah, and then from that knowledge, then you engage in a practice, Abhideya. And from the Abhideya comes the goal, which is Poyodra. And these are three words you're good to know. In our philosophy, you will hear it come up quite a bit. All right. So let's look a little bit into the introduction. Um, let's just save the rest of to half past one. We'll probably go through the introduction, okay? Now, we might not finish, but then we'll just call it at that, and you can, yeah, and then next week we'll definitely start with Chapter 1, okay? There's so many points in there. So, um, yeah, it's good we're stopping at half past one as well, because then you'll be just in time for Mahabhashad, <laughs> which is uh, downstairs, okay? So, if you want,
Bhagavad Gita, you can have it there with you. You can look through um, as we're going through. And I'll pick up some points on as many paragraphs as we can. All right. Um, so Prabhupada mentions in the first paragraph there that Gita is known as Gita Upanishad. So he's referring to the authority of the Gita. There's the Upanishads in the Vedic scripture. For one who are going above the Karma Kanda section of the Vedas, which means doing religious duties for material benefits. And above that is the Upanishads, which describe the nature and the meaning of life over and above just your material necessities. So it's called the Upanishads. When someone is going a little, they're a bit more serious about life. What's the meaning? What's the meaning of life? They want to know. So then one starts reading texts called the Upanishads. So the Gita Upanishad is considered to be one of those texts. So the Bible uses the word Gita Upanishad. Yeah. And then he mentions um, there's many editions of Bhagavad Gita. And he mentions one American lady came to him and obviously asked him, Swamiji, can you recommend a Bhagavad Gita that I could read? This was before Prabhupada's, even the Macmillan was out. Papa couldn't think of any Bhagavad Gita he could recommend. <laughs> so that, for him, that was a message from Krishna. I have to give Bhagavad Gita. I have to write Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. So Papa mentions there about, there's, there's many editions of Bhagavad Gita. And he mentions this more than once as well. For, you know, there's many editions, but he couldn't honestly, with integrity, recommend a Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Papa used to refer to, in his early classes, before his Bhagavad Gita was printed, he would refer to Dr. Radha Krishna's Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. With all due respects, he was an impersonalist. He was the Prime Minister of India who wrote a commentary on Bhagavad Gita. But Prabhupada would use the verses. Yeah. But then he would give his commentary. Yeah. So there's many, many, many commentaries. Prabhupada mentions that. He mentions they express their own opinions. Yeah not actually Krishna's purpose and meaning in teaching to Arjuna. Yeah. Some of you have read other editions of Bhagavad Gita? Because you know you read so there is plenty out there. Penguin edition, incredibly impersonal. The yeah, incredibly impersonal is one. The one by S Radha Krishna. Um, Radha Krishna. Yeah. Um yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit it's very academic. <laughs> yeah, very academic. Perhaps one of the um, kind of self-evident or what is self-evidence about, because we would say about the importance of Bhagavad Gita is that it changed people's lives. Bhagavad Gita as it is, it brings one to the point of accepting Krishna and and acting in the sense of devotion to Krishna. Many other interpretations of Gita don't always bring you to that conclusion. I say they don't. <laughs> Shankaracharya wrote a commentary on Bhagavad Gita as well. Yeah. Right, so that's um... Yeah, now then in the second paragraph, Prabhupada speaks about what's called the spirit of the Bhagavad Gita. Anyone can say what that spirit is. You can read it there if you want, in the second paragraph. And online, you're always welcome. So what's he mean by the spirit of the Bhagavad Gita? Not like a ghost. <laughs> the spirit of Bhagavad Gita. Second paragraph. You have the microphone? Yeah, we have this furry microphone we'll be handing you around if you want to speak. So so those online can hear. Yeah, you'll get used to using it. Yeah. Yeah, it says it here that um it says that um if you want to take a medicine, then we have to follow the directions given on that bottle or on that packet. So um yeah, so we can't just take it as we like yeah. it. It has to be followed, the prescribed. Those and Very timings. Good. You got that? Papa, this is the spirit of the Bhagavad Gita. 
you have to take it, you have to, according to the prescription of the Gita itself, yeah, uh, you have to apply it, you know. We cannot take the medicine according to our own whims or the direction of a friend. It must be taken according to the directions on the label or directions given by the physician. That basically means to really understand the Gita, you want to be devoted to the person who's speaking it. Then it's going to start to make sense. And this will come up later as well, because in the also in the um, here in the introduction, a little further on, Prabhupada says at least to understand the Bhagavad Gita, you should accept at least theoretically that Krishna is God. Otherwise, you're going to think this guy has got a pretty big conception of himself. <laughs> From me, a humsavasha pava voma tasa vam pavata, the itimatra bajanti mam, buddha, pava saman. From me comes all the spiritual material worlds. So, unless you at least theoretically accept Krishna as God, you can think this guy's got a problem, man. <laughs> this guy's got a, what do they call it? Um, the, the illusions of grandeur. <laughs> so, even so, Prabhupada's asking that of those who may not be devotees of Krishna, at least for this reading of it, you're going to have to accept as a basic line, a basic thing Krishna's God, okay? Then what he's saying may you, you may be able to relate to. But if you don't accept that, it's, <laughs> you don't understand it. So, you can imagine people who give a commentary on Gita and they don't accept Krishna or they, or they accept Krishna is um, is a manifestation of the impersonal Brahman and beyond Krishna there's Brahman you know what type of commentary are they going to give you know so, yeah any questions or comments on these please feel free to ask yeah. I don't remember where I heard I think it was the uh, microphone. Absolutely. Need it. Run out of batteries already. Yeah? No, no. I think I heard this with one sannyasi making the argument that someone else would make of that the Upanishads aren't part of the Vedas. Or something along those lines. Yeah, you have the Shruti and Shmriti. Yeah, Shruti and Smriti. So some, then known as Smarta Brahmas, some schools in Indian philosophical discourse will only accept the four Vedas, mm. yeah, which is Rig, Samo, Yajra, and Apava. Yeah. Now, there's a fascinating, wonderful um refutation of this given in Prabhupada's Prabhupada mentions it many times. Also, Jiva Goswami writes in a book called the Tatva Sandava. Now, in these original four Vedas, there are verses which are law to the Upanishads as the way to understand the Vedas. So these four Vedas themselves they direct one to the Upanishads as well. So I was getting, Shruti is the original four Vedas. Shmriti is known as remembrance or is the commentary upon the original four Vedas. So I don't know if you, I mean, I've tried to read the original Vedas. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. There's, they, that their language is so un- Difficult to penetrate, difficult to understand. It's written for persons thousands of years ago. Therefore, you need the Upanishads in order to understand. You know, what's the, also, the stories, what's the name of the story? Mm -hmm. Puranas, the mm -hmm. Upanishads and Puranas, which demonstrate the philosophical points in the Vedas, who here is for historical accounts. And then, so that's why I said then in the age of Kali, if I am, the only way to understand the Vedas is through the Puranas. 
And then Jiva Goswami then goes, but there's problems with the Puranas because they give different stories from different sages. But to cut a lengthy, to cut a lengthy, uh, what Jiva Goswami says, therefore, the best way to accept the Vedas is Shrimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> Mm. And he brings it so that so you're going to come across that sometimes. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And the, the Mahabharata, yeah, Mahabharata is considered under, one of Puranas. Is this it's a story history? So you got right. some, we will not accept anything from any other read, only the four original readers. And so, you know, some sometimes Brahmanas will have discussions, we only accept the four, Vedas. but in the four readers, there is verses which speak about the authenticity of the Puranas. And the Upanishads. And that's what Jiva Goswami brings out. Is all good? Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, now we won't be able to go through every paragraph, as you can tell. We're already elaborating too much on one paragraph. But we're going to give you a little taster that's there. Yeah. A little taster. I think I thought, I thought I'd give at least half of one lesson to this introduction, you know, because it's very um, inspiring. Um, then, um, so then Prabhupada speaks about um, Arjuna. What's what's Arjuna's relationship with Krishna? Friend. Friend, Saka. Yeah. And a devotee. Cousin as well. Sorry? He was a co cousin of Krishna? Cousin, yeah. He's, they have a close relationship. Yeah. yeah. He's a friend and he's a devotee. And uh, anyone, perhaps Krishna will later say why he's imparting this knowledge to him. Because one, he is not envious of Krishna. Yeah, He's his friend and, and he's devotee. So Prabhupada then is explaining that the science as it, as it is, there's one verse in the fourth chapter where get there, appears to be lost. Therefore, Arjuna is the one to hear again to establish the parampara. So Krishna is again speaking to Arjuna, this ancient science. Yeah. yeah. In the fourth chapter, it describes that this was given to kings. Kings were given this knowledge so that they could then direct the citizenship and the people in general to auspiciousness. So the Gita was given to kings originally. This is why the disciples succession is so important, right? Yeah. The Avam Parampara Praptam. Yeah, that's why it's handed down. This knowledge is handed down from guru to disciple. Yeah. The disciple doesn't change, but according to who is in front of him, he might present it in a certain way. Yeah. <coughs> Just like if you're meet your nan, you're going to, how you explain to Krishna consciousness will be a certain way. Even people at work or whatever, you're going to present it according to who's there. But you won't change the fundamental points. Yeah? Okay? Yeah, sorry, could you have... Uh, if the confession was uh, confused with Arjuna, why isn't he mentioned in the disciple? On page yeah, that's a good point. You'll see on page 21 there's a long line, you know. So there's so this is in in an informal basis. Krishna is again teaching to Arjuna the parampara. He's giving him the knowledge which is contained within the parampara. Okay. So Arjuna is not included there. Because he didn't have any disciples, etc., like that. Yeah. But then this Kampara is coming from Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Tako. So that's the kind of goal, that's the Vaishnava line. But it's like a tree, it doesn't just follow one line. It goes, in every disciple will have disciples and teach Gita. So, like a big goes in many different directions. But Bhaktisiddhanta encapsulated the teachings of Gita in the system of Parampara. So we can trace its history of when it was spoken. You understand? But 
beyond, but with those names, there's disciples, and they distribute it. You understand? So, so Arjuna, in that sense, he is one of many who received the teachings of Gita on the Battle of Kurukshetra. But then you have the Parampara. Yeah, is that clear? Yeah. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Again, any questions online? You can put in the chat. Okay. So then, to understand Bhagavad Gita, we have to become like Arjuna. All right. Anyone good at firing arrows here? <laughs> no, you have to be at least devoted, you know. Um, so then Prabhupada mentions, then he goes on to the different relationships that one can have with Krishna. Anyone knows what they are? We can say that the five relationships with Krishna. Passive, active. Passive adoration. Friend, friend, friend parent. Conjugal lover. lover. Friendship like that. Okay. And he brings that in there. Yeah. Um, Passive adoration. What's that? That's like the yogis will meditate upon Krishna, but normally Vishnu within the heart, but there won't be any particular service. So just appreciation of the divinity of Vishnu. Yeah, it's called passive adoration. Then if one advances further, one's going to want to serve. And then further it becomes more intimate. Yeah. All right, so Prabhupada mentions that. This is the purpose of the Krishna conscious movement is to bring is to bring you to one of these five four <laughs> relationships with Krishna. All right, hopefully we'll get there one day. <laughs> we'll be established as, as yeah, in a specific in a specific relationship with Krishna. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the purpose of our Krishna conscious movement. Papa mentions that in the there in the introduction okay so how does arjuna accept bhagavad gita uh, ex how does arjuna accept bhagavad gita param brahma param dharma pavitam itam uttamam that krishna is the supreme person he's he's the purest yeah he's the purifier this is the mood that this is in chapter 10 all right yeah then um then Arjuna, Prabhupada says, it's not just because Arjuna's relationship with Krishna is Sakya Ras, yeah, we mentioned, it's a friendship. So is Arjuna just flattering his friend? No. Then he quotes other great authorities who also accept Krishna as Param Brahma, Param Dharma, Pavutam Itam Uttamam. And some of them are Vyasadev, Naudamuni, Sita, Devala, that's a verse you're going to look at in the, what chapter? 10th Ten? chapter, yeah. So it's not just Arjuna, because he's good friends with Krishna. He's saying you're the best man. <laughs> no, many people, all oh, Vyasadeva, he's the scribe of the Vedas. And he accepts Krishna. First verse of Shema Bhagavatam as the all-pervading supreme personality of Godhead. So it's not just Arjuna. Yeah. So then he mentions we should take up, we could say take up this study in the spirit of devotion. Yeah, and that's where he mentions, at least theoretically, we mentioned that already, to understand. Otherwise, if we don't have that, what he's called submissive attitude, then Bhagavad Gita is going to be a great mystery. Yeah, we won't understand. Yeah. Great mystery. So what's the purpose of Bhagavad Gita? Did you say? Yes, Bhagavad Gita. Help one surrender. Help one surrender their position, yeah. Something else? Mm -hmm. Such one time for lessons. You've been reading a book, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well done. You said that without looking as well. Yeah, Bobby's right. But Prabhupada specifically says to deliver one from the nescience of material existence. Yeah. What does nescience mean? Ignorance. Ignorance. What's nescience of material existence then? Let's go a bit further. Struggle. Struggle. 
the struggle. Yes, entanglement, where we've forgotten, we've forgotten our true spiritual nature is the power of the of entanglement. Got that true spiritual nature. It's it's basically everything that you see in the material world, more or less. There's a lot of confusion. Is there a lot of confusion in the world? Yes. Yes, there's a lot of confusion in the world. Yeah. Nations, nations, what is life all about? What's the meaning of it? Yeah. Bhagavad Gita is going to explain what's the meaning of life, what's the point of life. Yeah. Sorry, I've got all these old songs going through my head when I was born. Best when lessons I... is all set. Sorry? Say again. I was going to say that nescience is also being in a state which you're not supposed to be in. Yeah, very good. So you, you are. Um, yeah. yeah, being in a state. So you're, you're, you're in. You're, yeah, yeah you're, you're coming in and out of it, but being in a state. Has anyone experienced that when you're before you took the Krishna consciousness? I'm in a state which I shouldn't be in. <laughs> I shouldn't be in this state, drunk or whatever. <laughs> you understand? It's like the soul's crying out, isn't it? I shouldn't be in this state. You know, we kind of know it like intrinsically down in the heart. We know I shouldn't be in this state. That's the soul crying out, you know. So, so yeah, many people are looking at it. I still haven't found one they're looking for that signs the song goes, you know. <laughs> uh, it sounds romantic. I still haven't found one I'm looking for. But it should be a song that says, I found what I'm looking for. <laughs> it's the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> you know, it's always this. Sometimes we have the experience that people come to the temple and they ask questions. And I start getting answers, you know, but they don't like it because they don't want answers. They they just want to keep questioning. <laughs> for them, it's too. I know I can't. It can't be the absolute truth, you know. I can't accept it easy as that. Anyway, you get the point. So Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada is saying introduction to deliver us from the meshes of material existence, you know. So hopefully that will be our experience after we go through this study as well. Can be, uh, uh. yeah. Papa says every man is in difficulty, man and woman. Okay, mankind. Okay, mankind is in difficulty in so many ways. Yeah. So then it's mentioned. So this is the relevance of Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna had his crew, etc. We have had crew, etc. War. Okay. <laughs> so the same. Yeah. We're in difficulty. And there's a, some wonderful verses and purples in the second chapter, which Prabhupada speaks on this point. Yeah, and when we we're, we're get there, we'll, we'll discuss that, you know. Um, then he's quoting from the Brahma Sutra. <laughs> yeah. Anyone heard of the Brahma Sutras? You heard it? Have you read for it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, there's two versions. There's many. Sankara and the Brahma Sankachari writes a commentary, very famous commentary in Brahma Sutra. Yeah, yeah. We have Baladeva Jabushana, who wrote a commentary on Brahma Sutra. Ramanuja Charya is so Brahma Sutras, if you don't know, the Vedas are vast, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of verses. But Vyasadev wrote them in essence into little sutras. It's a yeah? short version. Short version. That if you meditate upon it, you can expand upon it. Expand upon that sentence. And one of them is what's the first authorism of Brahma Sutra? Atato. Thank you. Atato Brahma Jignasa. Now you've achieved the human form of life. Yeah. Now is the time for inquiries. Yeah. What's the meaning? What's the purpose? You know. Brahma Jignas. So Papa quotes that here. Um, yeah, Papa, one who begins to question why they are suffering. Yeah. Animals don't ask that question, no? Have you any had him? <laughs> of course, they, they don't have the ability to communicate. 
we don't know what's going on, but generally they're not going to join a bug of a bug to such because, yeah, that's the prerogative of human being. Papa brings that out. And he mentions we're swallowed by the tigerish, tigress of nations. <laughs> Quite a graphical description, yeah? Swallowed, not just chewed upon, but chewed and swallowed by the tigress of nations. Uh, then he mentions, but the Lord is very kind, he's very merciful, and that's why he spoke Bhagavad Gita. Well, not just for Arjuna, but for us, 2025, yeah, onwards, you know, for us who swallowed in this nations of material existence. So to this end, he spoke Bhagavad Gita, all right? Um, there's so much in this introduction, but you know, we'll just spend another 10 minutes um, any questions or comments you want, or anything yourself you remembered from the Bhagavad Gita introduction you want to contribute, then please do. Um, so again, um, yeah. Need the microphone? Yeah. We get used to using this microphone and moving it around. I think Prabhupada talks on the on using it. I think touched on what you previously said about treating Krishna as God, essentially inducing that before Prabhupada mentions Bhagavan and like the translation yeah. of the word as it refers to like one of opulence, right? Yeah, yeah. Because there's a few times throughout, I think more in the Bhagavatam where Bhagavan refer refers to personalities that aren't Krishna. Yeah, Bhagavan, have you ever heard the question or comment? Yeah, Bhagavan, generally the term is given to, to explain Krishna. That's come from Parashamuni. Mm -hmm. He kind of gave, you know, explained it. So what's the six opulences we know? Strength. Strength. Fame. Wealth. Fame. Fame. Beauty. Renunciation. Renunciation. Knowledge. Knowledge, we got that. Yes. Yeah. So all that is embodied to an unlimited extent in the Supreme Person, as Bhagavan. Now, some great persons who are greatly powerful, sometimes they're addressed as Bhagavan. Mm -hmm. Shiva's addressed as Bhagavan. But he's he's not Krishna, okay? That, that is spoken of in Bhagavatam. Eche Kamsa Kalapamsa. So the word Bhagavan, Sanskrit, words are used in different contexts as well. So sometimes the Bhagavan is used in the context to describe someone great, someone someone beyond you and me, someone who's pretty far out. <laughs> Lord, uh, Lord Shiva is given. But the full definition of Bhagavan, only Krishna fits that, not even Vishnu. And that we'll describe next year when we go through nectar devotion. All right? <laughs> That's described there, okay? Yeah, thank you for thank that. You. Yeah. All right, so... Um, and then, question? please, yes, please, yes. Uh, sorry, I was just wondering with um with the different relationships like friendship and uh, uh parental relationship. I was wondering uh in terms of you know the Christian's conception of God as a father. Is that is that not a part of the uh, main relationships given the Vedas? Interesting. Um, in at least in my readings, and I do read some books on Christian theology. Um, they will not give you the details. That's what's given exactly in Shima Bhagavatam. Yeah, some Christians very much speak about a loving relationship with God, but generally it's in regards to His being omnipresent and omnipotent. But then they will speak often of a loving relationship. But the Father. Uh, what is it again? Yeah, it's that um, the relationship of being that's given in the Shima Bhagavatam in the context of being a mother or father of Krishna is different than what's understood in Christianity. All right? Because it's actual that, like Vasudev and Nanda Maharaj, they're actually. 
actually the father in the full sense of the term of Krishna, of Krishna, of their being, of Krishna being subordinate to them. You understand? So that's not in the same context when the Christians speak about our father. What is it? Our father, hello in heaven, hello is thy name. Yeah, it's a different context. It's, it is not the same context. Okay? But interesting you make that correlation. Did I answer the question? Or? Uh, yes, yes, thank you, thank you. Yeah? All right, okay. All right, so um, then we have what was mentioned in the beginning, the five basic truths. Again, the five basic truths of Bhagavad Gita. Let's get them fast. One, Ishvara, Ishvara Jiva, Jiva, Prakriti, Prakriti Kala, 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 Kama. Kama. Well done at the back there. You got them all. Yes. So five basic truths. Now, Prabhupada, now Prabhupada, he's referring to Baladev Vijabhushana's commentary on Bhagavad Gita, giving these five, what's it called? Five basic truths. Yeah. So he's referring now. To Baladev Vijabhushana's commentary. Yeah. And Prabhupada does that throughout the Bhagavad Gita. Obviously, he's 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 writing Bhagavad Gita, but what he does, he reads the commentaries on the Acharyas. On the names Baladev is gives a commentary. Vishwanath Chakravati gives a commentary. Then Prabhupada writes his commentary. Yeah. And he will write. He's he, he's in tune with what needs to be communicated right now, but sometimes sometimes he brings in points which are given by previous acharyas. Yeah, at the moment we're doing a study. It's very interesting. We're doing a reading on Bhagavad Gita, where we're looking at the commentaries of the acharyas, and looking at Papa's purpose, and you can see what he draws upon. Yeah, and you can see it's quite interesting. So anyway, for your information, don't worry. You won't be asked this question in an exam. <laughs> All right. What is in where in Prabhupada's uh, introduction does he refer to Baladev Vijabhushana? <laughs> won't be asked that, but for your information. Yeah. So then Prabhupada, I was I was in two minds whether to just skip all of these paragraphs where he elaborates on these points, but I couldn't help myself. <laughs> so I gave a little summary of
Uh, it's cut out. It's cut out for everyone. I think. So um, what would be good for you, if you can, if you can read through the first chapter, yeah? And then when we discuss it next week, you'll be able to more relate what's being said, yeah? So between now and next week, you can read the first chapter, okay? All right. Yeah. So thank you, everyone online. Okay. If you heard that, so yeah. please... We didn't have time to go through the whole introduction. I just gave you a little taster. Please try and read it in your own time if you haven't done already. And next week we'll begin with Dharma Kshetra Kuru Kshetra. Okay? Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.